Hindus are renowned for their marvelous collection of independent shops, cafes and restaurants. Over 250 retailers sit side by side in the four main streets, offering an incredible variety of things. Everything from designer and vintage fashions, bridal couture and leisure wear to everyday essentials and beautiful luxuries, unusual exotic gifts and curios, collectibles and art. It's a heady mix that forms an unbroken link with the past, continuing an eight centuries old tradition of providing quality goods and services. Surprisingly, it was the city's close connection with the sea that lay behind its early success. Medieval historian Catherine Wilson. It's hard to believe now, but in the Middle Ages, Chester was a thriving port, bringing goods from all across Europe. In the 14th century, Cestrians described themselves as living by trade, and the city was transformed into a place for prosperous merchants. Then, like today, all human life seemed to converge at the cross to do business and socialise along the rows. Right behind me here is where the main market in Chester was in the Middle Ages, a twice weekly market where people bought their livestock, their furs, all sorts of things to be traded and bought. Can you imagine the sights, the sounds, the smells? I'm not sure that I would have wanted to be here in the Middle Ages. But every so often, townsfolk were treated to street entertainment and had some serious fun. Every year, people flocked to Chester for fairs and religious plays, and these rows gave people a really good seat on the action. And remarkably, it's a tradition that continues to this day in Chester's colourful street parades held across the year. All this activity in the Middle Ages made the city a noisy cosmopolitan place, attracting visitors from countless far-flung places. Specialist traders set up shop and flourished from all the wealth pouring into the city. Almost 170 trade occupations were here in Chester in the Middle Ages, and many of them were situated in the centre of Chester on the rolls. So we have the ironmongers, the shoemakers and the butchers right here in the centre of Chester. Some specialist shops still cluster in communities along the rows today. Watergate Street is known for its antique emporiums, as well as art galleries. Talented artist Julie Colclough has travelled all over Europe, but was drawn back to Chester to study and paint the rows. It's so inspiring living in the centre of Chester and working here. There's so much history here, there's so much fantastic architecture. I have to fall out the door and I see new, new subjects every day. Often it's, often it's just the, the way the light is hitting something. Always been a great community along here and I think there are so many tiny shops, little independent shops, loads of hidden gems people keep telling us and it's a, a fantastic place to, to work. We absolutely love it, yes. Chester also has a reputation for having some of the finest jewellers in Britain, many of which are based in the rows along Eastgate Street and Bridge Street. One in particular lays claim to being the oldest shop in Chester, where famous connections and extraordinary treasures await visitors. Leo and Sons is not only the oldest jewellers in Chester, but it's actually the oldest shop in Chester. So it's been trading as Leo and Sons for 253 years since 1770. And in 2018, it was purchased by the Powells family and they redid the entire interior to restore it to its Victorian grandeur. Lowe's specialises in antique jewellery. One of our most notable clients would actually be our late queen. And then we have also had the privilege of making things for Prime Ministers Gladstone and Winston Churchill. Lowe's is really kind of a hidden gem, especially within Chester, because there's nothing quite like it. So when you come in, you're almost transported back in time. It's very grand. Um, and I suppose for kind of our younger audience, it's kind of got a Harry Potter feel to it, but with beautiful jewelry and silverware. Lowe's also proudly possesses a marvelous mini museum. It's an unexpected surprise with lots of fascinating items on display most interesting one if you're kind of a movie buff or you 
interested in history is we actually had a connection to the Titanic. So Harold Lowe, who was part of the Lowe family, was actually the fifth officer on the Titanic and he was actually depicted in James Cameron's film as well. So Winston Churchill was incredibly lucky. He got a lovely birthday gift from Lowe and Sons and he actually wrote us a letter to say thank you for the kind gift and we will also have that in our museum upstairs. Lowe's really is a hidden gem, a microcosm of the Rose experience itself, where along these elevated walkways there's always some new and interesting thing to see, explore and discover. From medieval times to the present day, Chester's Rose with their friendly community of traders remain one of the best retail experiences in Britain. For 800 years, the living, breathing, beating heart of Chester, and thankfully still going strong. If you have a special personal treasure, memory or photograph related to the rose, please feel free to share it with us on our Facebook page.